The day begins. Boys awake and prepare for the demands of the day. A day that embodies learning, discipline, and honor. A military way. The AMA way. Driving down Route 11 to Fort Defiance, Virginia, young boys would catch sight of stone gates, and an array of emotions would begin to overcome these soon-to-be AMA cadets as they started their journey towards graduation. Nervous. I think the school looked much bigger than it was <laughs> when I first went there. When my mom and dad left the room, I took a big gulp and said, I hope I've done the right thing. But my mother kept asking me, do you really want to go? And I didn't want to say no. So I kept saying yes. And so by the middle of September, I found myself at Augusta Military Academy. And all these cadets, these boys would come in, they'd need haircuts. So they'd go down to the barber and get their haircuts. They had to be fitted for their uniforms. Uh, there was a lot of homesickness, especially with their little boys. Because at one time, we started kids in the fifth grade. My dad attended there uh, years before, and he uh, felt that I should have the AMA experience. It took me to the front door. Some uh, senior cadet grabbed me, and I said goodbye to my mother, and they hauled me in. And from then on, I was a rat for a year. Uh, it was a very interesting experience. AMA, like most military prep schools, had a tradition of hazing the first-year cadets, otherwise known as rats. It was a ritualistic test to promote loyalty and camaraderie among the cadets. It was the first step of changing boys to men. It's your first year at AMA, you are a first-year cadet which meant that you were subject to being bossed around by everybody who had been there more than one year. And you were even required to uh, stay off the grass. And when you were to take a, a corner, you couldn't just walk around it. You had to do it in military style. So that it took a while to get used to that because some of these second year students were seven or eight years old. <laughs> and I was a lot older than that but I still had to take it the way it came. If you were at the dinner table and one of the upperclassmen wanted you to eat a square meal, you ate a square meal. And uh, it, 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 the harassment there was not bad. It's just part of, you know, taking it. If you take it in good, good uh, spirit, you fit in. You learn to get along with people. The first time parents were allowed back on campus was in October. So they dropped the kid off in late August and not see him until uh, usually the second or third week in October, parents weekend. And a lot of parents walked right past their kid and did not recognize him. The kid has changed that much. Uh, size, stature, uh, the way he carried himself. Uh, a haircut. It taught you reliance on yourself but at the same time, it taught you team, team spirit, team uh, camaraderie. It also taught us, I think, for me anyway, that you don't say, woe is me, I can't do it. You would always try to work to find a way to get it done. You'd work to make it work. My crucible was at AMA. Uh, that's where that's where you have to gain your, your independence. I mean, that's where you have to gain your, your self-reliance. That's where you have to learn how to forge friendships, uh, personal relations. You, you got to figure it out. You, you got to figure out how to get along with your peers. AMA's history of combining classical studies with a military curriculum began in 1879 with founder Charles Somerville Roller and continued with his sons, Thomas and Charles. 
making AMA classrooms a challenging environment. Colonel Roller, well, I knew him as Colonel then. We call him the big boy. He was in charge. And if you didn't believe he was in charge, you would go up there and he would explain it to you. He had my utmost respect. I'll be honest with you. When I left, I could say, honestly, I love the man. Colonel Roller was a mentor to everybody because he gave you instructions and you followed them and he wanted things done a certain way. He didn't get mad too often, but when he did, he got mad. He was a very caring, very much of a disciplinarian. He loved these cadets. He used to have a saying that there's no bad boy. They just get in a little mischief. When he died, there was about $200 in his bank account. He always liked to share everything he had. Oh, he was a character. <laughs> he uh, would, would patrol at nighttime. He had this old car, and he would drive around the, the, the uh, barracks and, and checking on things and all this sort of thing. I guess my favorite teacher was Big Boy, who was, he ran the study hall, but he had such a manner about him, Char Charlie Roller, that uh, you, you just liked him, you, you liked him. And he was smart, he was intelligent. Colonel Roller was just one of many dedicated AMA faculty members that helped shape these young men. I, I was always looking for male mentor, role model types, and, and there, I, I certainly found an abundance of them at, uh, at Augusta. Colonel Hoover, Colonel Savage, um, Coach Josephson, Colonel Rapp, Colonel Livick uh, certainly had a large influence on me. I really uh, enjoyed uh, the camaraderie, uh, but uh, the mentorship of, of those male figures. Savage was my, my friend, he was my mentor. He was, of course, uh, my official instructor on a number of things. He decided that I should go to college, no one in the family had. Simon McHugh was probably one of the brightest of the faculty that I've ever been exposed to. We called him Scientific Psy. Colonel Paul Hoover, he came in the early 40s, and he was there until the school closed. He was a, a math teacher and that was home to him. He was also a coach, had, had a temper, had a bad temper, and could use some very colorful words. <laughs> Mr. Nate Parkins, who taught French, and the story about him was that if a student started dozing in his class or doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing, Uncle Nate, as some of us called him behind his back, could hit him with a chalk from anywhere in the room. <laughs> that student would get alert in a hurry. Captain McHugh, the boxing coach, had a, a great influence over me. He was a no-nonsense man. He was very quiet. He had a little to say, but when he said something, it meant something, and you should act accordingly. You know, you knew that they had your best interests at heart. You knew they were, you know, working for you to succeed. They were pushing you to succeed. They were getting you involved in things that would make you succeed, and it just, you know, it was just a, a real sense of boost. Beyond the classroom, there was a whole other world that was AMA. There were sports, baseball, fencing, lacrosse, boxing, and there was the marching band, and the rifle team, and of course, football. In the early 50s, we used to play football against us, Stanton Military Academy. Well, one day, uh, out on the Stanton field, the bleachers, the football teams and the bleachers 
all met in the middle for a free fall and they had to call the fire department to break them all up. Um, it, it was just pure and simple pride, just school pride and just did it. Well, it was so bad that the uh, Stanton Military Academy went to, went to town on Saturday and we went to town on Monday. The city wasn't big enough to have both of us in the middle of the street one time. We had a great coach, uh, Jerry Claiborne. Uh, he was a he, he was an inspiration, <laughs> and he was a very uh, religious sort of uh, man. Anytime anybody used profanity on the field, they had to run to the far end of the goalpost, pick up some grass, and bring it back to him. So I was in pretty good shape. Uh, football obviously was uh, was king. Uh, and we had great teams, uh, very competitive teams, always winning teams. Uh, there was a tradition of winning there, even though the Corps cadets uh, would, would, would shrink and it was not the size that it had been. Uh, we always had tough, hard-nosed teams, and uh, we take, took great pride in the fact that we, we might not have the most kids or the, or the most talented kids, but, but we would always be the toughest kids out there. Uh, there was a competitive feeling there at Augusta that, that we took the field expecting to win every time. We had a drill team called the Roller Rifles, uh, which were named after my wife's father. To be in the Roller Rifles was one of the high points of your career at AMA. Uh, to, uh, to get into the Roller Rifles, uh, say your second year, was a, a real honor. We had a dress parade every Sunday afternoon, almost without fail. Uh, we'd have to have a, nearly a blizzard before we would call it off, even if it just meant marching around what we called the bowl, the front field. And that always drew a big crowd on Sunday afternoons. And of course, that was when uh, the girls from Stuart Hall or Fairfax were also allowed to come out. And uh, I've seen many an eyes right when there wasn't supposed to be an eyes right. <laughs> the dress parades became a well-known tradition around the area. And they were just one of many traditions that were a major part of the AMA way. The traditions were you went to church every Sunday. You had no choice about church. We marched, we dressed up, and we marched to church. We had Founders Day where we had to march to the cemetery and, and pay tribute to the founder. They also saluted all the cars on Route 11. So if they were going up to the store at the corner, it was called the fort, uh, they would salute all the cars that were going by. And if we talked to anybody that was in the area at that time, that was the one thing that they remember about AMA, was the cadets saluting them as they went by. 